Hey everybody, this is Annie. I hope you guys are well. First of all, let me begin with this theory that I have. It's not a really strong theory, but I was wondering about the balloons in Twin Peaks as you might have as well last year when you were watching. Um, we see those red balloons everywhere and as we were watching, everybody thought, is this a clue? What does this mean? Is this linked um, with the Black Lodge in any way? And then basically the conclusion was that it was a red herring. So I still see a couple of posts online about people wondering what they mean. And as I was just rewatching part three, um, when Dougie goes to the casino, I don't know if you've noticed, but there's actually a screen in the back when he enters the, like the coin machine area. I don't know how that's called. Um, on the screen, there's actually a bunch of balloons flying. So that got me thinking. And I realized, unless I'm wrong, let me know if I'm wrong, but from my memory, it seems to me like it's only in Vegas that we see those red balloons. I don't remember seeing any of those in Twin Peaks, in New Mexico, South Dakota, anywhere. It's only in Vegas. So in a way, I guess it adds a bit of a festive element, you know, how Vegas is this fake party place. It's like nobody goes to Las Vegas to be depressed, although I would probably be if I went there, but I've never been, so I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, it's kind of like, yay. Um, and it's very childish at the same time. And I think the balloon in, like in 119's house is even Dougie's house. It's, a little bit ironic in a way because there is nothing very festive about this. Well, except maybe uh, Sunny Jim's gym set. That's festive, all right. Um, and also I thought, you know, they're filled with air. So they're empty. So it shows that contrast to me. It's kind of like an aesthetic to show how Las Vegas is a festive, empty place. And there's also something kind of clownish about it. So those were my thoughts. It's really random. I just like, I was watching and I thought, I was supposed to do a video, so I'll begin my video with this. That being said, I just wanted to let you know, guys, um, I will be heading to New York City uh, in a few days in Brooklyn uh, to attend the Festival of Disruption. How could you find a better name for a festival curated by David Lynch? It's perfect. I can't wait to be disrupted. Um, and yeah, I'm super thrilled. I'm not sure if I'll be able to film as much as I'd like to because for certain events, you, it's restricted. So but whatever I can put together, for sure, guys, I will share it with you. Also, I'm kind of hoping to talk to David Lynch again because like a crazy woman I purchased a VIP ticket I mean for sure this year my goal was to hand all my money to David Lynch and that's what I've been doing and I have no regrets whatsoever um, so yeah that will be interesting it's just kind of starting to kick in that I realize that it's gonna happen and it's in May and May is like the best month so everything is perfect Apart from that, I know I've been pretty quiet, sorry. I've actually been going back to writing. I mean, not enough. I've had this huge creative block for a while, or like semi. And yeah, I've been kind of in doing a lot of introspection about this and trying to seize ideas when they pass. And so I'm happy about this. Uh, maybe one day you can read something, um, you know, a book or something substantial for me that is not on YouTube. Who knows? We'll see. No promises. We'll just, we'll see what happens. But I'm happy to go back in the zone. Thanks to David Lynch and Mark Frost for this. I mean, what a surprise, right? 
but they as I was watching the return I truly felt like they were signaling my own creativity and I started trying to look back like why when when did I start to slow down on my writing to end up just doing some you know blogs here and there but nothing so serious so thank you Twin Peaks creators even though you're not watching and you probably don't care um, so yeah and also for your information I wrote this little article for the 25 years later site I I've always been a huge fan of The Prisoner and things have kind of evolved as I became a Twin Peaks fan belatedly so so yeah uh, I wrote this article uh, I hadn't written in English for a while so I was pretty nervous but it was fun and it took me forever to do it thank you Andrew for your patience <laughs> but um, if you guys want to read it it's called The Prisoner Changed My Destiny and Twin Peaks kicked it in the nuts so there you can look it up on Google or on the site itself so that's it guys I just wanted to let you know I know I haven't done any um, watch uh, Blue Planet or um, Planet Earth also with uh, like Sarah Palmer would man it's been so long I almost forgot the title of my concept but don't worry, I'll have other silly initiatives. Maybe that one again. We'll see. I guess it just, it is what it is, right? So thanks for watching, guys. How are you doing? Any fun project on your side? Um, I see that a lot of you are like super creative, um, writing poetry, fan films, making dolls, editing videos. I mean, writing, well, performing daily haikus, you guys rock. So thanks for being a good influence on me. That's really awesome. So there you go. Um, do you have anything to tell me? Let me know in the comments. Make sure to subscribe because I'm supposed to say that. And that's it. Is it? Yeah, so, so typical that I'm not able to say goodbye in my videos. It's endless. Man, imagine if I could have some editing skills. I would just rock the world. But it's not the case. So, I guess we'll experiment with super long YouTube videos. <laughs> Alright, take care guys. Oh, take care guys. I can't speak anymore. Did you see? I just, I've had this poster for... A bit but I wasn't ready to put it on the wall but now a time a time presented itself so also you know the paint missing looked like stars so it all makes so much sense doesn't it all right take care guys bye